Good morning. Paul Green here, Comedians Commute. This is actually going to be a unique episode of Comedians Commute because I am not driving to work this morning. At least, not initially. I will drive to work later, but I am actually driving out to 99.1 Wow FM, which is a local radio station here in the Phoenix Scottsdale area. And I will be getting interviewed for my uh, big show on Friday. So that's going to be exciting. I have never been interviewed on the radio before. I've never actually really been interviewed. Well, I guess I've had like I had somebody interview me for like a YouTube channel that they do, but I never really saw the outcome of that. So this is going to be live radio, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, But the drive is going to be considerably longer than my drive to work, and it's going to involve a lot more freeway and navigating construction zones. So, much to the and uh, satisfaction of my insurance agent, Rick Morandi, who uh, keeps commenting on all of my Facebook posts whenever I post my comedian's commute that he's concerned that I'm filming a show while driving. I am not going to film my drive all the way to 99.1 FM for several reasons. First of all, because I think that would be just a little too dangerous to drive that long because I'm not going to be as familiar with the drive. And secondly, it's probably going to take me about 40 minutes to get there. And I don't want to talk for 40 minutes. And I'm pretty sure you don't want to listen to me for 40 minutes. So what I'm going to do, I am going to go ahead and cut transmission here. But I am going to film once I get to the radio station. And we can meet back up then. And we'll... We'll see what my radio experience was like. So that'll be my Comedian's Commute episode this morning. So I will catch back up with you once I'm at the radio station. Talk to you soon. So I'm here at the uh, Camelback Square. I am waiting for the host of the radio show to come down and to escort me to wherever I'm going. Traffic was really bad. So I'm feeling a little little tense because I wanted to be here about 10 minutes ago. So, we'll see how it goes. There's Tony. Hello! He'll be interviewing me today. I will be interviewing him today. He's going to ask me all the tough, tough questions. There's, uh, we're, looking at a, uh, uh, we're looking at a news item right now about celebrities who are bad in bed. So uh, That's a um, yeah. good thing I'm not a celebrity. I'm just yeah. bad in bed. There you go. And so when I kill, kill the uh, music bed, you know we're going to go in hot. Right. Going in hot. Going in hot. Locked and loaded. Here we go. 15. Mike's going hot. Mike's hot. Good blood and turning the morning. Wow, 991, your dance authority. Good morning, Tony. And today, we have Green of Roberts Longfellow in Green. Good morning, everybody. Oh, how are you? I'm fantastic. I got my shirt button all the way to the top. Just after Tony. I'm the fashion police. Yes, of, of all I can see that. The yes. Yeah. <laughs> this right there says it all. Yes, from the jeans from the 1980s. That's uh, that's good. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Actually, I did put boots on. I have the, my 1985 Converse at home. Okay. The, the Magic Johnson. Oh, I well, there you wear those go. I never left the 80s. Really. I can see that. You, it's kind of like I, you know when you watch the movie Fletch. I kind of continued it on. I was born in that decade, so oh. there's a, there's a little bit of a age difference there for you. Yeah. Two, actually, 13 days, I'm four years old, so yes. Well, congratulations. No, you don't look a day past 37. That's, that's, I mean, thank you seriously. I really do appreciate it. It's amazing. That. I appreciate it. Like, that looks like a 37-year-old right there, <laughs> not a 40-year-old. Come on. <laughs> so how you been doing? I I've mean, been fantastic. It's been a couple weeks since we saw you. I saw you at the Hub performing a couple weeks back. Yes, absolutely. That was a lot of fun, and things have been great. I uh, started my website paulgreencomedy.com about two weeks ago. Did you build it yourself? I built it myself using Wix, so it is a free <laughs> website. It's I have cheesy. not paid to get the logo removed yet. Well, you do that, and then you have your YouTube channel. We're filming right now. Yes. You're filming right now. We're filming on comedianscommute.com as well, which is uh, on my YouTube channel. I do a daily vlog when I drive to work. A vlog. A, a vlog, a video blog. 
and I drive to work, and I film myself Did driving to work. Did you create that name, Vlog? I don't think I created it. I'm not that creative. Too. Where did you first hear this term vlog? I do not recall in my life <laughs> when I first <laughs> heard the term vlog, unfortunately. But I, well, it's a new word. That's a new word for you, Tony. That's, it's a fairly new word. It's, in the history of the English language, it's a video vlog. It's probably older than selfie, though. It's older yeah. than selfie. It's not as old as, say, Vixen. Obviously our not. Lith our lithograph. <laughs> Since I don't know what any of those words mean, I'm going to... old school right there. Well, I'm just saying, old I'm school. just saying in the, in the English language, the word vlog is a fairly recent phenomenon. I will absolutely agree with you. Okay, even though to a lot of people they would think it's old to refer to your friend as a dog, where my dog's at, and that's how you and I rap. I don't know how we got from vlog to your well, friend's dog. Because that's, that's a, a fairly recent definition of the word. For many years, dog just meant an animal. Then it became friends, so it became a new definition. Vlog is a new word. Oh, when you say dog, you mean dog. Yeah, that's yeah. why I was confused. Dog. See, that's D-A-W-G, like Snoop D-A-W-G, which is totally different than dog. So if we're going to talk slang here, it's got to... You know, you, you, could really... you guys have totally lost me. I'm all <laughs> I know. I know, you know what? my coffee. Well, he's like, still stuck in the 1980s. He, he hasn't heard of Vlog or Snoop Dogg. I don't even know what you're talking about. He's yeah. I'm, I'm listening to Cool in the he's Gang still, over here. He's still yeah, trying to figure out what Belle Biv DeVoe actually means. Yeah, he, uh, he got lost in his parachute pants in 1989 yes, and never quite landed. Well, so did MC Hammer. Well, so. hey, Paul, when did you start doing comedy? You got a little background on yourself for those of you that are just getting to know you right now. Well, the first time I ever remember being funny was in the fourth grade. That's when I became the class clown. And I actually remember telling my fourth grade teacher, Miss Lyons, that I wanted to be a stand-up comedian. Wow. Seriously? That was in the fourth grade. fourth grade. I don't even think I knew what a stand-up comedian was. I think I, I thought I made up that term in the fourth grade. but I, I think it's so cool. I, I've known a few people in my life who said when I was a little kid, I would be a, see, most guys don't figure out they would be a stand-up comedian until they figure out that... No one's going to have sex with them when they play the guitar. Mm -hmm. They go, okay, I can't play the guitar. And then they dance. They go, no one's going to have sex with me the way I dance. So I'll become a stand-up comedian, and maybe someone will then want to make sweet love with yeah, me I never, then. Right. I never thought of it. I picked up the maracas after the guitar didn't work for me. See, and I am a percussionist and a guitar player and a dancer, and no woman has ever had sex with me still. So now i got to try. Ah, there you go. Now I'm just actually getting into the stand-up comedian. I'm trying to fulfill you my... You have a lot of tools in your tool belt there, Schneider. Oh, yes. Another, another like, 80s reference right there. There you go. Yeah, I keep them going. Yes, that's I why I'm not following you with the Schneider yeah, right. reference. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so you're going to be at the... Uh, my God. Uh, you're going to be at, you're gonna be at the... Uh, uh, you know what? We're gonna get you, we're gonna, I'm going to get you some Time Life books. Like I loved. The, I watched the infomercials. The nineties and the two thousand. No, 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 no. I'm still in the fifties, sixties, seventies, and eighties. So you can get caught up a little bit. <laughs> I have a lot of work to do. We're gonna help you out, Thunder. Thank you. <laughs> you brought this on yourself. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. It's so just me. Paul Paul Green, who you'll be able to see on his vlog. Comedianscommute.com. Comedianscommute.com will be at the Tempe Center for the Arts. Friday night at 7.30, along with Valerie Roberts and uh, Michael Longfellow. It's kind of a cool show because the Tempe Comedy Concert Series is about developing emerging artists, and you are considered one of the uh, funnier and more talented emerging artists here in the greater Phoenix area, and um, it should be a fantastic show. Yeah, I'm absolutely looking forward to it. Come on out. It's going to be a great show. Lots now, of fun. You've worked with Valerie and with Michael before. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I you like best? Um... Who's most likely to be listening to the show right now, Come Valerie on. or Michael? Valerie. Michael's probably still sleeping. He's like a, the college kid. He's probably sleeping in. Yeah, he's passed out somewhere. Valerie is actually listening either on the way to work or at work. Yeah. So, so of the two, Valerie Roberts. Yeah, we'll say Robert. Valerie Roberts. Valerie Roberts. We'll say right. Valerie Roberts. Michael's That's actually safe. right outside the door right now. Yeah, <laughs> I, I can take him. <laughs> you could. He's a rather thin man. He's a thin man. But it, it truly is a triple threat the uh, Tempe Center for the Arts. I mean, all three of you, I've seen all three of you perform uh, amazing talent. Yeah, thank you. You guys are great. Yeah, And absolutely. one thing that's great about you is everybody can enjoy you. It's not like you're like NC-17 or rated R or X. I mean, you're, you're uh, performed for all ages, that's what I'm saying. Yep, absolutely. I always do clean comedy. I learned that um, my first actual comedy experience here in the Valley was I did improv with the Jesters for about six years, Jesters Improv. They sure. just opened up a new facility in Mesa, and they were all ages family friendly, and I just really latched onto that, and I've just determined I want to be able to always say jokes that 
I'm not ashamed that my mother will be listening right. to because she's the only one who watches my vlog as well. So I need to make sure. <laughs> Do you look into the camera while you're driving doing a vlog? I mean, you see you're doing this commuting. I mean, there's an element of danger here. It's funny you say that because the first vlog that I posted on my Facebook, my car insurance agent, Rick Morandi, came on and was like, you know, Paul, I'm not well, comfortable with not you. This, so so I actually have the camera right on my dashboard. I bought a little cell phone mount. And okay. so I'm like looking right at the road. It's no different than like mounting a GPS. And I don't stare into the camera. I thought, yeah, I thought you were staring yeah. into it. Like, That's I a really talented guy. Gaze right into the <laughs> camera lens and creep out all my have viewers. You, have you ever mounted a GPS? Have I ever? I f you said you said it's like mounting a GPS. The way that you're looking at me, I feel like you have some sort of inappropriate I'm, I'm thought like, in look, your mind. Look at the shirt he's wearing. He just lit some candles. You know in what? The yeah, that's there. true. You know what? You think this is a cool <laughs> shirt. That's the problem. It's a modern shirt. You're sitting there in a shirt. Uh, uh, you got that at the uh, at the uh, Goodwill adjacent. Hey, I know how. Adjacent to, pinch to what? All right. Yeah. I know how to pinch pennies better than anybody. So. Well, Paul Green's joining us in the studio here at the Comedy Schools downtown studio. So, all right, so, you, you know, it's true, by the way, because I've seen you perform many times. And, Lucky uh, you. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I just roll like that. And that uh, you're one of the comics who decided that you were going to work clean, but at the same time, it's like edgy stuff. It's interesting stuff. A lot of the times when people think clean comedy, they think it's something they're going to hear in a church, you know, uh, at a church picnic. But you uh, you write really high-quality stuff, but you work hard be able to write something that you would be able to uh, say in front of anyone anytime. Absolutely, yeah, and it's kind of an interesting thing because yeah, people hear clean comedy, they think I'm going to sing Barney songs and hold hands. Yeah, but that's, and that's, that's truly an art, to be perfectly honest with you. There's a lot. There's some comedians out there that can describe certain things that are, shall I say, like double entendre, where it goes over the kid's head, and you can describe it with clean words. Yeah, that's a true talent. I mean, I think of a, a like Jeff Foxworthy a little bit. Yeah, when you see him live. All the, the kids can stay in the room back in the old days, even though he's been in hot water. Late. Bill Cosby was one that always was always kind of on the clean roll. Everybody could be in the room. I remember as a little boy watching Bill Cosby himself with my family. I was like five, six, seven years old. Were you wearing your parachute day. pants? I was wearing my parachute <laughs> pants and, and listened to Cool in the Game. And uh, I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, absolutely. And it was always so like, that was my first taste of comedy, I remember as a little boy. And that's, that's awesome because you can shape somebody that was that fourth grader like you that wants to be a comedian by being up there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I've always appreciated the the clean comedians. You know, Brian Regan is is one of my favorites, and you can listen to a whole set of his and never hear anything even slightly inappropriate. But you're you're laughing your head off the whole time, and that was really what I what I aspired to be. Is you know, I want I want people to laugh. I don't want them to feel uncomfortable sure. or feel, you know. Well, that's really like awesome. A, and uh, Paul Green, Tempe Center for the Arts. Uh, Tempe Center of the Arts, you can Google uh, Tempe Center for the Arts, 480-350-2883, this Friday, 7.30, with Valerie Roberts and Longfellow in the show, Roberts, Longfellow, in green. Paul, thanks for coming in, buddy. Yeah, appreciate, appreciate it. Thanks for having times. me. All right, it's Lennon Turning in the Morning as well, 99.1, at your dance authority. Perfect. Ooh, man. Yo, thank you. Great. Good. Thanks, man. Perfect. I didn't like that. Can we do it again? Huh? Let's just do it yeah, again. We'll do it a couple <laughs> notes. Yeah. Just a couple notes. Tony, yeah. I really didn't feel like you were engaged. If we could maybe work on that. We just kick up the energy Should a little bit shirts? and let's change shirts. <laughs> <laughs> I have a shirt that was actually bought at a department store. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, you got Tom uh -huh. Jones. Look at you. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll do it. Uh, you know, let's tape it again next Tuesday next. N Tuesday next. Tuesday next. I'll put that on the calendar. Yeah, and then we'll blog and vlog. We'll blog and vlog. Yeah. Awesome. Well, everybody, I just got done with my radio show. There's Tony. Bye. There's Len. I'm going to go actually drive to work now. He's going to do his job now. <laughs> All right. Well, that was my radio interview. Uh, 99.1 Wow FM. I am now actually going to drive to work. However, I don't think I'm going to do a video because my work is about 30 miles away and I do not want to try to navigate the 101 freeway in dense traffic for that long. So that's going to be all for today. Thank you so much for watching. This is Paul Green with ComediansCommute.com, PaulGreenComedy.com. Have a good day.